Today we're going to talk about the EMC 2208 UART mode on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Now I need to explain a couple of things about the board real quick to you. This is the default position of the jumpers as you see them on the board right now as it arrives. Now I'm going to be moving jumpers a round in the video, but I want to explain that this is our X stepper port, our Y stepper port, our Z stepper port, our E0 stepper port, and our E1 stepper port. Now this is your first extruder and possibly your second over here. Now keep in mind, no one is paying me to do this tutorial or sponsoring me. And I purchased all the equipment with my own money, but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So according to the SKR version 1.4 guide or data sheet, they explain in their manual how to set up the jumpers. So as you can see down here, they show a picture of the, the jumpers as they should be. So they're showing one jumper for UART mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to align our jumpers the way that they show. So in order to get the jumpers in the right position, what we need to do is remove our jumpers here. So I'm popping them out with a dental pick. And what we need to do now is replace the jumpers that are in the correct position. So I'm going to take a jumper and I'm going to place it right here according to their directions. And I'm going to do the same for the Y stepper as well. So as you can see now, we have the jumpers in the position according to the documentation. So here's the top side of the Big Tree Tech PMC version 3.0 for UART. Now I need you to understand a couple of landmarks on the board. First of all, we have a trim pod, which is right here. That trim pod is used to adjust current, but because we're using UART mode, we shouldn't need to adjust it. Then over here, we have a pin called Enable. That is EN on the board. And on the other end of the board, we have a direction pin and a ground pin. These will help us align it, but Big Tree Tech has given us another clue on our board. And if you turn this on its side, you can see real close up that this side has red pins for the top. Now if we flip it over on the other side, we can see that it has black pins. So this is also another clue for connecting it to the board for the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Here's the underside of the TMC 2208 with UART. And a lot of people have said that they've had issues with their solder pads not being soldered. Now, if you look up where it says J2 at the top of the screen, you'll see three solder pads. Inside the first two on the left hand side next to J2, there is, I believe, a zero ohm resistor that's soldered there. Some cases, people have reported that it's fallen off, but this is an extreme close-up to show you, so I'm going to point to it with a dental pick right over in here. 
that is a zero ohm resistor between those two pads. If that's missing, your UART may not operate correctly. So keep that in mind. Okay, in order to connect it now, now that we know where the enable pin is, and if you watched my previous tutorial, you know that this female port is enable, as well as this one, this one, this one, and this one. We know how to connect it. So we're going to pick up the board, and because they've color coded it with red on one side and black on the other, we know how to connect it. So we're just going to place it over our pins and then apply a little bit of pressure to put it in place. And we're going to do the same with the Y axis as well. So we're going to place it over here and then we're going to push down. Now keep in mind. I haven't talked about cooling yet, but what we need to do is we need to place a cooling pin on top of it like we have here in order to wick away the heat. But you may also need to have a cooling fan running on top as well. In fact, may should be you should. So I'm going to put the cooling fan on here. I'm going to peel off the sticker and attach it to the top. Okay, now I have it attached to the top, so I'm going to place it back in. And there we go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set this up for programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the big side of the USB to the board and then I'm going to attach the small side to the computer and you may hear a beep when this occurs now to start with to load the firmware we plugged in the USB which then gave us the view of the USB serial port for the SD card on the SKR version 1.4. Keep in mind this is the current firmware and the date modified for the last upload. So let's go over and open up VS Code. Now I've already downloaded and opened up version 2.0.x which now has been modified so that we can use the SKR version 1.4. So we're going to go into the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then in the core folder. Then we're going to open up boards.h. Inside boards.h we're going to do a search on SKR and as you can see we have board underscore big tree underscore skr underscore b one underscore four so we're going to copy that then we're going to close out of boards.h we're going to minimize the core folder and the source folder and go to configuration.h inside configuration.h we're going to do a search on motherboard and we're going to highlight board underscore ramps, underscore one four, underscore EFB. And then we're gonna paste what we just copied. Now we're gonna scroll up a little and we're gonna go to serial port and we're gonna change that to a negative one. Now to set up the stepper drivers, we need to go to, or search on, A4988. And this brings us to our stepper drivers. So currently, they're all commented out because they have two of these in the front of them. Right here, these two slash marks. In order to enable them, we need to remove the slash marks. So that's for the X driver. For the Y driver, we're going to do the same. And then for good practice, we're going to do the Z and E0, which would be our first extruder. 
Now, as you can see, it says A4988 for the driver type. That's the stepper driver. In order to get the right type that we're using, being the TMC2208, what we need to do is copy this, then paste it over the A4928. So let me do that real quick for you. So we're going to copy, then we're going to highlight, and we're going to paste it. We'll do the same for the Y driver because those are the two that we're using. So the other thing that you have to worry about, if you saw my previous video on the A4988 and the DRV8825, is that we have to adjust our steps. Now, I'm going to let you figure this out on your own because I've already covered it once. But keep in mind the TMC2208 can do stepping between 1 16th of a step all the way up to 256th of a step. Most people don't recommend using 256th of a step. Just keep that in mind when you're using your stepper because it may not function the way that you thought. But let's go over to the configuration.h tab. Now I'm going to do a search on 800 to get us to where we need to look for something here. So the stepper driver has the current configuration. So for X current right now, it says 800. This is where we electronically configure the stepper with a value. So this is what's most important to everyone about their steppers. So over here on the right hand side, it does talk about how to set up the correct current value being root mean square, which is RMS. This is a formula that you can multiply by in order to set up your stepper according to your data sheet. And your data sheet means the TMC2208 UART and the data sheet that comes with your particular stepper motor. So keep that in mind. And then down here below that, it has a couple of different values. I guess you can do X current home now for sensorless homing. Now the TMC2208 does not have sensorless homing, but stepper boards like the TMC2130 do. So keep that in mind. And then for micro steps, this is a way to increase the number of steps. So right now the default is 1 16th of a step. That's a good starting place for you to try things and then gradually move up by going to 32, then 64, then 128, then 256. But I do not suggest 256. Even 128 seems a little high for the stepper, but keep that in mind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the 800 here to 700. And we're gonna leave the Y axis alone for under has trinamic so that you can hopefully see or hear a difference you may not be able to and that's fine but the other setting obviously is down here so the other things that we need to set up in order to check that we have the correct configuration is first of all monitor driver so i'm going to do a search on monitor So we have monitor driver status right here. So what I wanna to do to enable this is I'm going to remove the comments. Now keep in mind, this gives you some functionality right above here that allows you to use debugging commands like the M122 will be a very important command in a moment and you'll understand why. But the next thing that we need to enable is called TMC debugging. So we're gonna type TMC debug for our search. And right down here we have define TMC 
underscore debug. So we're going to remove the comment for that as well to enable it. Now keep in mind there's other functionality that I'm not generally addressing in this. And the reason is I'm just trying to show you how to set it up and work with it. But there's a couple of other important things. Um, for instance, up above here, there's a hybrid threshold mode. This is an intermix between spread cycle and what we're currently using. So you can see right here that you can increase your speed. I'm not going to currently talk about that. Currently, it's common it out. This is something you might want to experiment on your own after reading up on it. But the general gist of this tutorial is just to get your steppers up and running. So I'm going to go over to the platform io.ini and in our default environment currently it says the mega at mega 2560 so that's not our chipset our chipset is the lpc in capital letters 1768 now that'll allow us to compile and then upload to our board so over here they say for the checkbox build which also means compile and then they have upload upload contains build within it so it'll compile and then upload to your board so we're going to check that now this may take a few moments to compile okay as you can tell the compilation has completed and the build has produced a firmware.bin that it's copied over to our USB drive or our micro SD card, sometimes called a TF drive. Now, what I'm going to do to load it is I'm going to remove the power for the USB and then reconnect it. So I'm going to remove the power now. And while that's loading, I'm going to show you real quick that our file actually completed successfully over here. So I'm going to turn the power back on. And the time should be updated to this moment in time that we had compiled. Okay, off camera, I connected the steppers for the X and the Y over here. And I connected the power. And if you've noticed, I've marked these with red for positive and the other one I've left blank so you can see the contrast. I'll talk about these in future tutorials for the extruders and for the fans. Now keep in mind I want to remind you one more time that you want to use fans to keep these cool so that they don't get damaged. So the other thing that I need to show you is because we just programmed with the USB, I need to disconnect it for a moment and I need to move over the power for direct power over here. So now I'm going to reconnect this and I'm going to plug this into the wall. Now that it will be energized, do not touch the board because it has a lot of power or electricity running through it and I want to keep you safe. So now we're at the point where we want to test it. So I'm going to open up Pronerface. I'm going to connect to the SKR version 1.4. As you can see it said connecting and printer is now online. So to test our steppers we're going to use the command M12 and press enter and as you can see the 700 that we set earlier is showing up and down below for testing for the X and the Y it says OK. So the next thing I want to do is I want to move the Y stepper first. Now pay attention to the sound. Now I'm going to move the X stepper. See if you can notice the difference. You might not be able to, but it's okay. Now, there's probably almost no difference in sound that you can hear from a distance, but keep in mind that you can lower that until 
the motor doesn't move to figure out what's going on. And also keep in mind that if this is a new install or an install that is replacing another stepper driver, that you may have to invert the direction that your stepper turns. But I'll let you figure that out on your own because I can't tell everyone's configuration. And I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my tutorial. And please, like and subscribe.